In this video, I've got three Angular tips to help you improve the performance of your application and the organization of your code. To give this video some structure, these tips, which are pretty varied, are focused on one theme, which is passing data between components. To give you a sense of what this video is about, I'm going to give you a brief outline. I'm going to be talking about literal narrowing using string and numerical literal types, the use of replay subject and what distinguishes it from the other RxJS subjects, and finally, how to use services to share data between components. So let's get started. First, literal types. Literal types are not actually an Angular concept, it's actually just a TypeScript concept, and they come as a result of literal narrowing. Now, you probably already know what that is, even though you might not be aware of it, but think about what you do when you declare a variable in just JavaScript. If you know that variable is only ever going to have one value, you'll declare it as a constant to indicate that the value will never change. Whereas if you know that the variable is going to have many values or could be changed later on, you'll declare it using var. When you declare using a constant, you're narrowing down the possibilities for that variable. You're narrowing it down specifically to only one value. And so this is literal narrowing. However, TypeScript gives another way of doing literal narrowing. For example, in this gradebook application, there are various types of assignments. There can be normal assignments, exams, assessments, observations. However, the whole set of these values is finite. Now typically what I would do when I declare the assignment interface and I listed all of its fields for type, I would declare that as a string since the type is all defined by strings, assessment, exam, assignment, etc. But by using string literals, I can actually be more specific about what those strings can be. So instead of saying the type is a string, I would say the type is an assignment type. And that would mean that it's a string where the string can only be any of those finite values. You can also use numeric types, which is a way of defining a type as a number, but specifying which values are valid. So to what end do we do this? Why even go through the trouble of declaring these literal types in the first place? Once you've done this, you get the benefits of autocomplete as well as compile time error indicators. In general, it's just a cleaner, more organized way of keeping track of the data in your application. That tip was easy. The next part can be a little complicated. So I wanna start by giving you an outline of what I'm about to present. Here's the idea. In this example, I have an app that's used for keeping track of data in every class that you're assigned to. So in this example, the data that we're focusing on is that class data. The class data is retrieved at login, it's used to populate the gradebook view, and when the user navigates over to the reports view, this same data is used to populate that view as well. Now, of course, I don't wanna to have to access that data more than once. I can do that using one service, which I'll talk about in a little bit populate both views. So what's the best way to do that? If I'm going to get the data one time and I wanna use it every time I go to another view, how do I do that effectively? So the answer that I present to you is a replay subject. What is a replay subject? What is a subject? A subject, any type of subject, is a type of observable, but it's designed to be more efficient when being observed by multiple observers. In your Angular applications, especially your large ones, you're going to find that many components are going to be observing the same source of data. Let me start off by saying, if you have any confusion about subjects, if you'd like more clarification on RxJS and the documentation behind it, I do have several introductory videos to help you become familiar with the vocabulary and the often confused terms. I highly recommend it. If you're already a little bit familiar and maybe just need a reminder, let me break it down like this. The difference between a subject, a behavior subject, and a replay subject all depends on how they're instantiated and what happens when you subscribe. When you subscribe to an ordinary subject, you won't get any data until a change is made to the underlying observable. So when I first log in and I'm opening that gradebook view, I might get all of the grade data initially, but when I switch my view over to the reports view, because no change happened on the database, there won't be any change to the subject and I'm not going to have any data to populate my view. Well, what about a behavior subject? The nice thing about a behavior subject is as soon as you subscribe, you get the latest emission. Well, what's the problem with that? 
The problem with that is a behavior subject needs initial data to be instantiated. I can't create a behavior subject with no initial data in the same way that I can do with a uh, regular subject. Now, of course, I could just populate it with some kind of placeholder like an empty array or null or something like that, but there's actually a much better tool. A replay subject is a combination of both a subject and a behavior subject. It's like a subject because you can instantiate it without any initial data. It's like a behavior subject because anytime you subscribe to a replay subject, you'll get the latest emitted value. That means when I open my app, the replay subject is instantiated. It has no value. That's not a problem. When I log in and I get my user credentials, those credentials will be used to retrieve the class data, which will cause the replay subject to emit. Then my gradebook, which is subscribed to the replay subject, will populate its view. And when I navigate to a new view and that view gets instantiated, it subscribes to the replay subject and also gets all of the data. Let's talk about the best way to pass data between different components in Angular. I can tell you one way that I think best exemplifies what makes Angular powerful. I think it comes down to using services. Now I'll make a really brief argument for why I think this is best, because if I'm going to be using something like inputs and outputs, or if I'm going to be using view child, then I'm always going to have this parent-child relationship where data is either being passed up and down. That isn't very hard when you're passing data between one child and one parent, but when you have several generations of components inside of components inside of components, then you're potentially having to keep track of data from like great-grandparents all the way down to great-grandchildren, and it can get very tedious to refactor code once something changes and you need to go through every generation and update it. Services are an incredible feature because they get instantiated when they're needed, which is whenever they're injected into components, and that injection happens automatically. In a hierarchy of components, great-grandparent all the way down to great-grandchild, when I declare in that component's constructor that that component needs to have a service injected into it, Angular will check to see if that service already exists, and if it doesn't, it'll instantiate an instance of that service and automatically inject it into that component's constructor. So to show you how I've used services to make things a lot easier, I'd like to show you two examples. One example where I don't use services, and I wanna briefly go over what my code looks like and why it's tedious and disorganized, not spend too much time on that because I don't wanna waste time showing you what not to do. And then I wanna show you how I've used services to make things a lot simpler. So this is a view that lets me edit custom inputs for my gradebook. And what I'm going to do is overlay a graphic here to help you see how these components are related. We basically have three levels. Now let's take a look at the code for this. What I want you to notice here is the redundancy in inputs and outputs for the parent and the child they're all getting their information from that grandparent. There's a lot that could be said about this, but what I don't like is the redundancy, and I don't like keeping track of these inputs and outputs. There's a more elegant way to do it, and I'm gonna show you right now. This is a function that lets me preview reports for students. So you can see right now I've got Alice and Douglas selected, and the class that I'm looking at is the demo class. If I jump over into the student view, I can see what the student would see when they log in. So I jump over there and you can see that once again, I have Alice and Douglas selected and the demo class. If I make a change to this dropdown and I select Amy Anderson and I go back to my reports tab, the report preview, I have Amy Anderson selected. So these two very completely different views are both sharing the values for which student is selected. How are they doing that? So what I have here is a class called data target service, and it's basically a service that keeps track of all of the selectable values that need to be shared across the entire app. You see, I've got a replay subject right here for class targets. Down here, I've got the setter and the getter for class target, and nothing very exciting about this. It calls the next function on the uh, subject that keeps track of the class targets. And then for the getter, I'm just returning the 
the observable, which in this case is a replay subject. Here's what's very interesting. If I go over to class target select component, you'll see it doesn't have any inputs or outputs at all. All it has is a constructor that injects data target service. And you can see that whenever there's a change to the value, it simply calls set class target for the data target service. And when it syncs up, like when it gets instantiated and it needs to get any values, if they have been defined, we just subscribe to class targets and we set the selected items to whatever the uh, class target happens to be. So without any dependencies on a parent at all, this individual component can always keep up to date with whatever the value is across the entire app. The service is persistent. So whenever one of these components gets instantiated, that service is going to get injected into the component and the most recent value will always be emitted into this subscription right here. In summary, if I have a data model, I'm going to use literal types to be more specific about what the values can be for each of the fields in that data model. When I retrieve that data from a server, I'm gonna store it using a replay subject and I'm going to keep that replay subject inside of a service. Then, for all of my components, I'm going to subscribe to one service in order to access that data as many times as it's needed. Then, because of how RxJS has designed replay subjects, and because of how Angular has designed services, I'm going to get the full benefit of the most efficient code. I hope you found this video helpful. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I make videos every week, so subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks.